Blood transfusions are very important in healthcare, and it's very important that the blood from a donor is compatible with the blood of a recipient. Let's discuss the basics of ABO and rhesus compatibility in blood transfusions. Make sure to check out our previous videos where we went over the ABO blood grouping system and hemolytic disease of the newborn. So here we have schematic diagrams of red blood cell packets. So they are representing the donor's red blood cells. We will start off by discussing ABO incompatibility. Let's say this packet contained blood which contained blood type A. And remember, this means that the red blood cells contain A antigens and the antibodies are anti-B antibodies. Let's say this red blood cell packet contained blood type B, which means that the red blood cells will have B antigens and the antibodies will be anti-A antibodies. Let's say this red blood cell packet contained blood type AB, which means that the red blood cells will have both A and B antigens, but there will be no anti-A or anti-B antibodies. And finally, let's say this packet contained blood type O, which means that the red blood cells will not have either A or B antigens on its surface, but it will have anti-A and anti-B antibodies. We will now consider what will happen when each of these red blood cell packets are transfused into a specific ABO blood type. So this schematic diagram is representing the recipient of the blood transfusion. And we will start off by considering a recipient who is blood type A. And remember, this will mean that the recipient will have red blood cells that contain A antigens, and the recipient will have anti-B antibodies in the plasma. It is very important that the recipient's blood type is compatible with the donor's blood type. Because if the recipient receives the wrong type of blood, then this can be very dangerous as this increases the risk of the patient developing a hemolytic transfusion reaction where the recipient's antibodies attack the donor red blood cells. So it's very important to match the recipient's blood type to the donor's blood type. To understand which ABO blood types are compatible with a recipient specific blood type, there are two important principles to remember. The first principle is to ignore the donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions. This is because the donor antibodies will become diluted in the recipient's blood. Hence, we do not have to consider what will happen with the donor antibodies. So let's remove them. The other key principle to remember is that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. So in this situation with the recipient who has blood type A, and hence the recipient has anti-B antibodies, the recipient cannot receive any blood which contains B antigens, as if the recipient receives blood which contains B antigens, the anti-B antibodies in the recipient's plasma will react with the donor B antigens, and this will cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. So we must avoid giving patients with blood type A any blood which contains B antigens. Let's see what happens when each blood packet is transfused into a recipient with blood type A. Let's consider if blood type A is transfused into this patient. This transfusion is compatible because the donor red blood cells do not contain the B antigens, so there are no antigens for the anti-B antibodies to react with, hence this transfusion is compatible. Let's now consider if blood type B is transfused into this patient. Now this transfusion is not compatible, because the donor red blood cells contain B antigens, so the anti-B antibodies in the recipient's plasma will react with the donor B antigens, and this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Hence, the recipient cannot receive blood type B. Let's now consider if the recipient receives blood type AB. Now again, this transfusion is not compatible, because the donor red blood cells contain B antigens, hence the recipient's anti-B antibodies will react with the donor B antigens, and this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Hence, the recipient cannot receive AB blood. And finally, let's consider if the recipient receives O blood. This transfusion is compatible because the donor red blood cells do not have any antigens. So there are no B antigens for the recipient's anti-B antibodies to react with. Hence, patients with blood type A can receive O blood. So in summary, patients with blood type A can receive blood from blood types A and O. If you understood everything so far, then understanding the ABO compatibility for the remaining blood groups should be straightforward. Let's consider the ABO compatibility for a patient who is blood type B. Again, remember, this means that the recipient has red blood cells which contain B antigens and the recipient has anti-A antibodies in the plasma. Now, when considering the ABO compatibility for this recipient, remember the two principles. We ignore the donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions because the donor antibodies get diluted. So let's remove them. And remember the other principle 
which is that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. Let's consider if the recipient receives A blood. Now this transfusion is not compatible because the donor red blood cells contain A antigens. So the recipient's anti-A antibodies will react with the donor A antigens and this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Let's consider if the patient received B blood. Now this transfusion is compatible because the donor red blood cells do not contain the A antigens, so there are no A antigens for the anti-A antibodies to react with. Let's consider if the patient received AB blood. Now this transfusion is not compatible because the donor red blood cells contain A antigens, so the anti-A antibodies will react with the A antigens and this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. So patients with blood type B cannot receive blood type AB. And finally, if the patient received O blood, this transfusion is compatible because the donor red blood cells do not have any antigens, so the anti-A antibodies cannot react with any antigens. So in summary, patients with blood type B can receive blood from blood types B and O. Let's now discuss a recipient who has blood type AB. And remember, this means that the patient's red blood cells will have A and B antigens, but there will be no anti-A or anti-B antibodies in the plasma. Remember the principles. We ignore the donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions, so let's get rid of them. The other principle is that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. So let's see what happens with each transfusion. If the recipient receives A blood, this transfusion is compatible because the recipient does not have any anti-A antibodies, so there's no risk of a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Similarly, this patient can receive B blood because the patient does not have any anti-B antibodies, so this transfusion is also compatible. The recipient can also receive AB blood because the recipient does not have any anti-A or anti-B antibodies, so there's no risk of a hemolytic transfusion reaction. And finally, the patient can receive O blood because there's no risk of a hemolytic transfusion reaction as there are no anti-A or anti-B antibodies and there are no A or B antigens on the donor red blood cells. So in summary, Patients with blood type AB can receive blood from blood types AB, AB, and O. And this is why patients with blood type AB are called universal red blood cell recipients because they can receive blood from all AB or blood groups. And finally, let's discuss if the recipient has blood type O. And remember, this means that the red blood cells do not have any A or B antigens, but the recipient has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in the plasma. Again, remember the principles. We ignored the donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions, so let's get rid of them. And the other key principle is that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. Let's work out which blood groups are compatible for transfusion in a patient with a blood type of O. If this recipient receives A blood, the recipient has anti-A antibodies, and these anti-A antibodies can react with the donor A antigens, and this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. So this transfusion is not compatible. If the recipient receives B blood, the recipient has anti-B antibodies, and these anti-B antibodies can react with the donor B antigens, and again, this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction, so this transfusion is also not compatible. If the recipient receives AB blood, the recipient has both anti-A and anti-B antibodies, so both these antibodies can react with the donor A and B antigens, and again, this transfusion is not compatible. And finally, if this recipient receives O blood, because the donor red blood cells do not have any antigens, there are no antigens for the anti-A or anti-B antibodies to react with. Hence, this transfusion is compatible for patients with blood type O. So in summary, patients with blood type O can only receive blood from blood type O. Let's now discuss this in reverse and see the compatible recipients for each specific ABO blood group. So blood type A can only be given to patients without any anti-A antibodies. So this includes patients who are blood group A or blood group AB. Blood group B can only be given to patients without any anti-B antibodies. So this includes patients who are blood group B and blood group AB. Blood group AB can only be given to patients without any anti-A and anti-B antibodies. So this only includes patients who have the blood group AB. And finally, O blood can be given to all patients. So it can be given to all ABO blood groups. This is why people with the blood group O are called universal donors, because they can give blood to all ABO blood groups. Let's now discuss rhesus compatibility in blood transfusions.
Let's say this packet contained rhesus positive blood, which means that the red blood cells will have the rhesus D antigens, but there will be no anti D antibodies. Let's say this packet contained rhesus negative blood, which means that the red blood cells will not have the rhesus D antigens, but there will be anti D antibodies. Let's consider a recipient who is rhesus positive, which means that the red blood cells will have rhesus D antigens, but there will be no anti D antibodies. The same principles for ABO compatibility applies here. So we ignore donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions because the donor antibodies become diluted in the recipient's plasma. So let's remove the anti-D antibodies. The other key principle is that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. So let's see what happens if rhesus positive blood is transfused into this patient. This transfusion is compatible because the recipient does not have any anti-D antibodies, so there is no risk of a hemolytic transfusion reaction. Let's say the recipient receives rhesus negative blood. This again is a compatible transfusion, because there is no risk of a hemolytic transfusion reaction, because the recipient does not have any anti-D antibodies, and there are no antigens on the donor red blood cell surfaces for the anti-D antibodies to work against. So in summary, patients who are rhesus positive can receive blood from rhesus positive and rhesus negative. Let's now consider a recipient who is rhesus negative. And remember that this means that the red blood cells do not contain any rhesus D antigens. Now in terms of the antibodies, patients who are rhesus negative are capable of producing anti-D antibodies. But their presence depends on whether the patient has previously been exposed to the rhesus D antigens. So in other words, whether the patient has previously been sensitized to the rhesus D antigens. Let's first consider that this patient has previously been sensitized to the rhesus D antigens and that this recipient has anti-D antibodies in the recipient plasma. Let's apply the principles again. We ignore the donor antibodies for red blood cell transfusions, so let's get rid of the donor anti-D antibodies. And the other principle was that if the recipient has antibodies against the donor antigens, then the transfusion is not compatible. Let's see what happens if the recipient receives rhesus positive blood. This transfusion is not compatible because the recipient has anti-D antibodies. So when the blood gets transfused, the recipient's anti-D antibodies will attack the donor's red blood cells. And this can cause a hemolytic transfusion reaction. An important point to note here is that the hemolytic transfusion reaction that can occur due to rhesus incompatibility between the donor and the recipient is usually much less severe than the hemolytic transfusion reaction that can occur due to ABO incompatibility between the donor and the recipient. This is why often in emergency situations where there is only rhesus positive blood available to transfuse, the rhesus positive blood is often given to the rhesus negative patients because even if the rhesus negative patient has anti-D antibodies in the plasma, the hemolytic transfusion reaction will usually not be too severe. And remember, rhesus negative blood can be given to rhesus negative patients because there's no risk of any hemolytic transfusion reactions because there are no rhesus D antigens on the donor red blood cells for the anti D antibodies to react with. Hence, this transfusion is compatible. So, to summarize, patients who are rhesus negative should receive rhesus negative blood. But now let's consider if this patient had previously not been sensitized to the rhesus D antigens, and in other words, this patient does not have any anti-D antibodies in the plasma. Let's also consider that this patient is a woman of childbearing age. If this patient receives rhesus positive blood, this transfusion will be compatible at the time, as the recipient does not have any anti-D antibodies at the time, so there will be no hemolytic transfusion reactions. The problem is, that the recipient has now been exposed to the rhesus D antigens and hence the immune system of the recipient will now produce anti-D antibodies. And in other words, this blood transfusion is an example of a sensitizing event as the recipient has now been sensitized to the rhesus D antigens. Remember, we said this is a woman of childbearing age and because this woman has now been sensitized to the rhesus D antigens and now has anti-D antibodies in her plasma, this can complicate her pregnancy, as her baby is then at risk of developing hemolytic disease of the newborn, which we talked about in the last video. So this is why it's much preferred to give rhesus negative blood, particularly to women of childbearing age who are rhesus negative. Let's finish off by talking about the reverse process. Rhesus positive blood can be given to patients without any anti-D antibodies. So this includes patients who are rhesus positive.
Rhesus negative blood can be given to all patients, so it includes both rhesus positive and rhesus negative patients. This is why patients who are O negative are considered universal donors, because they can donate blood to all ABO blood groups and donate blood to all rhesus blood groups. This table is a summary of which blood groups are compatible in terms of ABO and rhesus compatibility. You can pause the video at this point and hopefully after watching this video you will be able to understand this table and understand why certain blood groups are only compatible with other certain blood groups. Key points to remember is that patients who are O negative are universal red blood cell donors, patients who are AB positive are universal red blood cell recipients. And that is a summary of the ABO and research compatibility in blood transfusions.